All right, today we're going to learn a little bit more about our American smooth Viennese walls. Today we're going to do our fifth position breaks. So join me, get your dance shoes on, let's get on that dance floor, let's do this. Hi, and welcome to Sunstrike Dance Sport. My name is Jim Cole. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about our American Viennese Waltz fifth position breaks. Uh, if this is the first time that you've joined me here on this channel, I wanna thank you for that. Uh, I want you to, if you could, please like the video, please hit that subscribe button, and please hit that bell for notifications. That way, anytime Sunstrike Dance Sport has a new video and you wanna learn, you're gonna know right away. I uh, have an order going out for the jackets. So check these out, Ooh, okay. If you're interested in purchasing one of those, please leave it in the comment box below and I will set you right up. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about those uh, fifth position breaks. Fifth position breaks are a great little step that if you don't want, to, or you're traveling, you're doing the left, you're doing the right, uh, the reverse of the natural turn, and you just need a breather. Uh, we did the hesitation steps already. This is a nice way to kind of link another step into to kind of get us uh, a, a time to be able to reset and get our minds clear and figure out what we're gonna do for our next step. Also, it's a very nice show step. It's a nice link step. It's something that you can use uh, no matter where you are, what you're doing with this Viennese waltz. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show the leaders part first, then the followers part, and then toward the end of the video, we're gonna have some techniques. So please stick around for the end of that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about this fifth position break. Now the fifth position break is no different than any other fifth position that we've seen. We're just gonna add a little bit of flair to it. We're gonna get a little bit of rise and fall, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the leaders part. I have my left foot free, and I'm gonna to step to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is take my right foot into fifth position. And then I'm gonna lower, put the weight back onto the left foot. Then I take my right foot back to the side, and then I take my left foot and go into fifth position. So I use a little bit of toe pressure. I rise up and back down. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. So getting a back view of that, we have a one, two, three, a one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Nice. All right, let's talk about the followers part on that. So she's a mirror image of this. So we're gonna start with our right foot free, and we're gonna be going to our right first as he goes to his left. We have a one, Two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. So we have it from the back side. We have the right foot free. So we have right foot to the side, left foot goes into the position, weight back onto the left, left foot to the side, right foot goes into fifth position, Rising up, weight back onto the left. So the timing for that is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Nice, okay. So let's make that a little bit better. So we've already talked about the uh, sway action from our hesitation steps from one of our last videos. If you haven't seen that yet, go back to the archive for the hesitation so that that will kind of bring you up to speed. So we're using that same kind of action. Now, there are a couple of different ways in which we can do the uh, fifth position breaks. We can over-rotate our upper body, 
and that's fine, especially if you're doing it for a show dance or a, uh, a performance, that's okay. But for the sake of uh, practice here, I wanna make sure that when we do it, we keep our sternums, our centers facing each other. So as I'm doing the step, I don't wanna think of over rotating everything. So when I rotate my lower body, my upper body is still connected to my partner. So I'm not doing a one, two, three, and a one, two, three. I mean, we can do that, but I would like you to learn how to do it where we're connected from our upper body and the rotation comes from the lower body. This will allow us to understand that that counter rotate or that rotation from below is separate from our upper body. So as I'm doing it, you'll notice my sternum is facing the camera, right? And I go one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and I'm still connected to my partner. So when we do our fifth position, so that's the first thing we want to think about is staying connected. Um, I'm thinking of that sway action going to the side, and then what I'm doing is I'm just rotating my lower body to do this by keeping my upper body facing that camera. This is a great way to uh, practice uh, keeping the separation, uh, becoming separate from below. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so what happens a lot of times when we do this, we tend to really pop out of the floor and because this Davini's waltz is so fast, we really want to kind of stay connected to that floor. We don't want to be bouncing out of the floor. So you'll notice that when I do my side steps, like notice the, get too close to the camera, as I step to the side, you'll notice my right foot still stays connected to the floor. As I do my fifth position now, you notice as I step to the side, my left foot still stays connected to the floor. Why I do that, it does two things. It helps me to stay connected to the floor and not pop out. And second, and probably one of the more important things that I like, is the fact that I don't lose my balance because I'm actually dancing with two feet instead of dancing with one. When I dance with one, then I become a little bit more unbalanced. So thinking about connecting the feet as we're doing those uh, fifth position really helps us to stay stable and that will allow us to be uh, better for our partner. The other thing I want to talk about, and this is important too, is that we need to respect um, our partner center. So we want to have what we call a common center. And so when I do this, I want to make sure that I'm dancing and maintaining my distance from my partner. So when I do that, I'm not really changing my upper body because the more I really kind of open out and change, it's going to disrupt my partner. Okay, this is why I want you to practice keeping those sternums facing each other and not rotating the upper body when we're doing this. Uh, later on, we're going to show you different ways in which we could open up, make it look a little different. But for the sake of practice and getting the basic fundamentals down, I'd really like you to try it that way. All right, so if any questions on that, please leave them in the comment box below. What did you think? Do you like that better than the hesitation steps? Well, if we add them together with the hesitation steps, it kind of gives us a little bit of continuity. So we have a one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. Now I can do my fifth position breaks. One, two, three, two, two, three. You see that? And that kind of kind of links it together. It gives us a nice little presentation. Well, if this was the first time that you liked or been on my uh, channel, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscription button. And please uh, hit that bell for notification. I know there's a lot of choices out there. And I'm so happy that you chose to hang out with me today. And I hope that you learned a little something with it. Uh, if you find benefit from it, please share the video. Help others to see how they too can improve their beanies waltz. So I want to thank you for hanging out and have a great day.